custom made. This is a gift from Doug. Thank you so much, Doug. I'll be using this shillelagh to show you how to defend yourself when stuff hits the fan, W-S-H-T-F, when it hits the fan, how to defend yourself, the walking stick. It could be an Irish shillelagh like this. It could be a homemade walking stick. You pick up something, make it yourself, get a dowel from the store, sand it, put some oil on it, or you pick up a stick from the woods, from the yard, anything that's about this length will do or a little bit longer it can be a hiking stick but you can defend yourself the walking stick i'm going to show you how first though i want you to warm up your wrists by turning this way anytime you train you should prepare so you don't have to panic when something hits the fan whether it's a zombie apocalypse or everybody's fighting over the last box of uh cheetos or uh groceries in the grocery store maybe it's who knows what's coming, right? Who knows what's coming next? Lockdowns, shutdowns, put a lot of pressure on everybody. Everybody's out there a little grumpy, a little cranky. You need to defend yourself. You don't want to use a option. You want a different option. This is a really good option, a walking stick for self-defense. And again, this is the Irish shillelagh. This is the Blackthorn. This one's made, custom made. This is a gift from Doug. Again, thanks, Doug. And this has lead shot here in the tip. I'll just show you very quickly. This thing hits extremely hard, but I want you to see how to use it. Hello to everybody who's here so far. Thank you for joining me. Put your hand on your walking stick. If it's this size, this is about 36 inches, you're going to be using it as you would any other walking stick, kind of like a cane without the crook, not as long as a hiking stick, but that all about the same principle. The first idea is that you're going to pick it up and stick it in the other hand. You simply do that by turning your wrist and bring it up. Hey, hello, Ed. Ed says, Irish I am. You can see Ed, you bring it into this hand. Now, here is what's important about this move. Don't bring your elbows and your shoulders up. That puts too much pressure up here. And if you're not as strong as you used to be, or if you have some injury, you wanna protect those shoulders. Plus, I want you to create maximum force. Since I aim it, we've got it from the town of Shillelagh. This is the official Irish fighting stick. Since I aim it can teach you more about this one, but this one we're doing today on the walking stick, how to defend yourself when stuff hits the fan. You know what I mean? Use a walking stick. Something you might have with you, you can take it with you anywhere you go. But the first thing I want you to do is just put it into the other hand by turning your wrist up like this. This becomes a very strong, powerful position for you because it's down in front of your body. You're not in your shoulders, your elbows aren't up. From here, you simply shove it straight in, going for the privates, going for the midsection, going for the belly button or the solar plexus. If you need to, you can bring it up and in, under the chin, through the throat, but the first motion when you defend yourself with a walking stick, whether it's an Irish shillelagh or anything else, is that you're gonna bring it here and shove it. Now, I don't always get to see everything that you guys put in the chat. I do see it from time to time, but please keep chatting and put in the comment section anything you want me to see. I go back and I watch these later, but if you want me to see it a little bit sooner, put it in the comment section. And um, you guys talk amongst yourself. What else would you do with your walking stick when stuff hits the fan? Like I said, it could be a zombie apocalypse, a little far-fetched, but who knows? With all of the pandemics going around and all the different things that are coming out, who knows what's coming down the pipe, right? But you wanna be able to defend yourself, prepare yourself, the threat's coming at you, simply push in here. The second thing I want you to do is take both hands, just like you're gonna do push-ups, right on your shillelagh, on your walking stick. And again, it doesn't have to be a lead shot filled Irish shillelagh. It can be any walking stick but you now have a bar of hard material, in this case, hard blackthorn wood, that you can stick through his teeth, through his nose, through his eyes, in through the throat, into the chest, all the nerves up there, and just blast them back. It takes what you have naturally, and it multiplies. It's a force multiplier, using this wood, striking in this way. I like to build these combinations together, and I'm gonna bring, yes, we're gonna, uh, Throw that ball up under the chin. In just a second, I'm gonna show you that one. But first, I just turn this up here. This is about immediate, direct, and explosive. One of the principles of self-defense that I teach 
when using the walking stick or the walking cane is be immediate, be direct, and be explosive. If I need to immediately respond and I can't get into this better position or slide it up under the chin, I'm going to get it like this. Now, but this between me and the threat, he's got to get past this to hit me. I'm going to drive that in here, pull it in, and then go through the chin this way. The third strike I want you to build upon this combination is pulling this front hand to your shoulder and then striking in and down. Think about temple, ear, neck, jaw, anything you can hit to destroy or remove. It's the ability to see you, breathe temporarily or permanently for self-defense. You're gonna use the principles of violence against violence. From here, striking here, and then there it is, that big hard hammer. That thing here is gonna go right through his jaw on the other side. So now I can strike one, two, one, two, and the whole time, both hands are on my shillelagh or on my walking stick. I'm not gonna lose it very easily this way. Now, later, I'm gonna teach you how to strike using one hand and coming through with force, enough force to knock the tip off on this side and then using that hammer. This, by the way, this lead filled, is filled with lead shot. This, I'll tell you, this will crack a skull easily, right? Your walking stick. It's a very effective self-defense tool. You can use this to defend yourself extremely effectively. And because this has that extra weight there, this is almost like a levered weight, like a hammer. It is a hammer, right? This is going to allow you to do so much more damage than just a regular walking stick. But I want you to be able to, again, build upon these, these uh, strikes. So the first thing you're here, put it through his groin, strike through his body, come down here, and I want you to box a little bit into his body, pull, and by turning your body, you create massive amount of force, just an extreme amount of force, all concentrated on that little tip right there, that little piece of almost indestructible wood that's going now into his midsection. That's going to, it might not pierce him like a sword, but that's gonna do enough damage to create this effect of getting him away from you, getting him off of you, ending the fight, using violence against violence. His violence, which was unwarranted, it's unwelcome. You didn't ask for it. You're minding your own business, but you have to respond immediately. And so you're gonna bring the fight to him and finish it with those strikes. Now, you can also, by carrying it this way, slide it up into your hand. As I saw you guys were talking about a little bit earlier, you simply pull it up, okay? From here, sliding it up. Almost like a, um, what do they call it? Marionette, or not a marionette, a um, majorette. The guy, the guy with the, ba the band thing, right? Uh, it, comes from, it comes from the military. It's a military tool. It's a military weapon. But it's the same thing. So now you're holding here, you can thrust in these jabbing motions. Think about, again, and I can't, I can't really express this through the camera. If you wanna see what these look like, it's the second link below. The first link is to uh, longer staff, but the second link is for an Irish shillelagh, Blackthorn, made similar to this, made in the same kind of place, that will break the jaw. This is filled with lead shot. I can't show you that through here, but I can tell you when I hit with it, I have a lot more force than I do with my dowel rod that I picked up from the, the hardware store. So when I have this here, that's it, flag, flag bearer. When I was in the Marine Corps and I was uh, honored enough to carry the flag in, uh, you know, for someone who had passed the color guard, we, we would, you know, you'd learn how to do some basic moves with that too. From here, I thrust straight in. You can come around and hook. Think about a hook punch to the jaw, to the temple, into the ear, into the neck, breaking the ribs. Coming around here, you have this motion here. You can bring it up at this angle, striking hard up under the chin or into that throat for more permanent self-defense. This self-defense tool or into the body, into the groin, and all these angles work at every single height. Bring that into the body and you can double it up. Bring it here, bring it here, throw the other hand on it, strike. You've got those boxing motions again. Boom, get him out of there using the hammer. Then you can 
from this position, as you bring it up, you can use it almost as if you would a sword or an escrima stick, a collie stick, um, our knee stick, slashing, coming through. And again, because of the way it's made, it's extremely strong, it's extremely durable. And then of course, if you put it into the other hand, and you're now striking with the same strikes, but with this hammer, it does a lot of damage. But the point is, immediately respond, get it between you and the threat, whether it's this position, or hey buddy, you're too close, back off. If I bring it up here, and I step back, putting my body behind the stick, I'm always gonna fight. That's another principle of self-defense. You have to learn when you're using walking sticks for self-defense. You put the stick between you and the threat, right? If he has a weapon, or if he's bigger, if there's multiple opponents, you strike here, you can strike here, come through here, come down here, down on top, thrusting back this way, over this way, you can move very quickly and effectively with massive amount of force and pressure just having a stick in your hand. If it's a walking stick like this. This is the ultimate tool when stuff hits the fan. Who knows? Like I said, could be zombie apocalypse. Maybe you're like Morgan from The Walking Dead. You need a walking stick to defend yourself or you're just looking for an extra option. You're looking at what's coming. It seems a little crazy. Uh, the world's changing so fast. Who knows when the chaotic uh, time that we're in is going to start to settle back down. But in the meantime, you want just a little extra self-protection. So you start to carry a walking stick. Not to go out picking a fight and trying to hurt somebody, but in case you have to say, hey, you're too close to me. Back off. Other hand comes on here. Now you're striking as if you would use... A, a katana, a Japanese sword. Your hands are separated, so when you bring it down, you can stop it. When your hands come together, you create a pivot point, and it's almost like a baseball bat, but that gives you a little bit less control. So you want a little bit more control here. And since Amos says, here in Ireland, put ourselves between the attacker and the stick, give him a little jitsu, right? A little jitsu, snatch him up. Um, we were doing a little bit of that this morning, a little bit of self-defense. We were using the stick and adding a trip, right? For self-defense, create distance, and then go in and sweep out with a leg. We can work on that a little bit later. Uh, right, wear, police wear right helmets. All right, so I didn't see that last comment, but we can go over those in more detail. Again, put them in the comment section. This is a discussion, right? What are you doing pr to prepare? Are you prepping your pantry? Are you buying extra food and water, batteries? Are you getting extra matches and some candles and a light source and a heat source and something to clean your water? If you do, if that's what mindset you're in, are you also preparing your physical body to last, to be able to walk far, to be able to run, to run and help somebody, run and help your family members, to pick up your stuff, the most important stuff, and throw it on your back, your uh, WSHT when stuff hits the fan bag or get out of town bag or get home bag or bug out bag, can you carry that and somebody else that you care about and what are you doing to prepare yourself with your walking stick? All right, Shannon says, what if someone grabs a staff? Uh, Ed, been doing that for some time now and since they may have a sensei or shillelagh smash, the helmet of the riot cop is not uncommon thread. Yeah, and since they emit, I don't know if you saw and hear when we had a lot of the riots last year, there are actually rioters using the walking cane to attack the police officers and created uh, some, and it created a little bit of tension with inside me because I don't want to teach somebody how to do that. But I know the bad guys aren't watching my video. Only good guys watch my videos. So I appreciate that. Plus the police officers have a lot more tools for self-defense than just a uh, riot helmet and, and they can defend themselves against the shillelagh. All right, but with the shillelagh, Shannon, you said what happens if someone grabs there are two things that I want you to always do when someone grabs your staff, whether it's the longer staff, the bow, the Joe, um, or the Hanbo, which is the same size as this, or if it's a hiking staff or a walking stick or your cane, simply turn so that one hand comes up. If their hand is here and you twist up, all of a sudden that changes the position of their wrist and then you're gonna push down into it and that's gonna compromise their grip here. You can see that's starting to open my hand. Or if you turn it the other way and you bring it down that way, that gets there a lot faster because that compresses all those 
nerves. From here, I twist and then I strike, or twist and I strike. So you're going to very quickly twist and strike, twist, and when you strike, it's just you're pushing. Whatever hand comes on top, straight down. Hand comes on top, straight down. Now, I do stress test this, Shannon. I let people, are, are when I'm here and I'm teaching in, in class, and sometimes, I don't know if you saw, it was in one of these videos, later at night, I had uh, young Liam, who's uh, a lot taller than I am and stronger than I am, I had him demonstrate how we do the twisting motion. Now, the second principle there is if you pull, he's gonna pull back, right? Most people are gonna pull back. As they pull back, you go with them. It's just like when you were kids and you guys were wrestling over something, you let something go and the person falls back, you go with it. And as you go with it, you pull, turn, and then you give it to them. So you turn here and strike, turn here and strike. As long as you can get this turning in this position and then push the front hand down. And you have to practice this, turn and down, and it might not be the first time you do it, but let me show you this. No matter where he has, or he or she or whatever, has grabbed your staff, wherever the bad guy grabs your staff, your walking stick, you're going to maybe have to go a couple times, but if you step with your foot, you pull back a little bit, forcing them to respond. That's the basic principle of martial arts like jujitsu, Aikido, Judo, is that you wanna use their energy, their force against them, but you have to create a motion for them to create a counter motion. So if you pull, they pull back, you go with it, and then maybe you throw a couple into his jaw or toward his cheek or toward his face a couple times, and then they're gonna respond by moving back, and then you turn and, and you have to uh, go down forcefully. Now the point is this, you might not be able to re get it on the first time. You not be, might not be able to turn and get it out of their hands the very first time you do it. You might have to wrestle back and forth a little bit, but stay calm, stay in control. Learn how to calm down, don't slow down. If you're going back and forth, that's okay. You still know where their hands are. They're not around your neck, right? They're trying to wrench this out of your hand, that's okay. You might be able to throw a knee up into the groin as you're in this position. This is about learning how to fight, not immediately do one thing and it works on the very first time. So that's fine. Shannon said that she's not as tall, she's gonna be closer to his waist. And I think you mentioned before, Shannon, uh, something about your height. So let's say you are down in this waist. That's all right, strike into the waist, if you can turn a little bit, get that into the groin. If he's still holding on while you're here, you can put an, your shoulder into the midsection, forcefully turn and then bring it down. If his hands are down here and he's trying to pull up, you can still turn this and bring it into the body. And, and I'll go over this. I'll grab, um, I have somebody who I think is about your height, a woman about your height, maybe about your age, who comes in tomorrow night, and we're gonna work with this tool and the cane, Shannon, and I'm gonna have her, we'll, I'll practice it with her, and we'll stress test it. Stress testing means, um, if I say this is how you do it, but I never have anybody kind of try to come and smash me in the face while it's happening, then I'm just talking out of my arse, right? Out of the backside of me, and that's no good. If I say you gotta turn and do this, but I never have somebody who's younger and stronger, and more aggressive, just try to snatch it out of my hands and make it work. And sometimes we have to, we get a few bruises. <laughs> sometimes I get my nose split straight up on the nostril. That happens. And then the blood comes out. Um, I had another injury this week that knocked my wind out. Not an injury, but a strike. And it was good. And the person immediately started saying, oh, sorry. And I'm like, don't you dare apologize. That's what we're here for. If it doesn't work, I don't want you to do it. I don't want to be teaching you some crap that, that uh, is all theoretical, it ha you know, it's, and it's not supposed to be pretty. That's the, the biggest challenge that I have. Like Aikido, I love, I love Aikido. I love a lot of, uh, of martial arts where, um, and hop keto and techniques where like you throw the punch and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna come in here or I'm gonna turn it, twist, I'm gonna take you down this way. Those are so cool and fun to learn, but they don't always pass the stress test. That's why you don't see in combat training, all the young Marines and all the Army Rangers and all the Special Forces Navy SEALs, they're not out there doing Taekwondo. They're not doing Aikido. They're, they're boxing and they're doing basic low kicks 
and they're doing some basic uh, straight out uh, Brazilian style jiu-jitsu or old style ju or new style jiu-jitsu and they might be doing a couple of basic moves but they're only going to do the things that they've been stress tested in com uh, combat right if it doesn't same thing with law enforcement. You can teach law enforcement all you want, these high level Kung Fu's and teach them, teach them the one inch punch, right? And watch a cop try to do a one inch punch and then say, that was still, still they're not gonna do that. Or, or, or the Hubad Lubad or the Wing Chun and all that other stuff. Or even um, the Kali stuff is all really good, but when you need to save your life with it, you break it down to just a few techniques. And it's only going to be the few techniques which are immediate, direct, and explosive. Closest distance is that straight line, right? So from here to here. And if they grab hold of it, twist, twist. And you can practice this. Turn and down, turn and down. It's this motion. One, two, one, two. And here's another cool one. Let's say he grabs your staff and he's holding on to it, Shannon. And you take this hand and punch, right? He's pulling it in this way and you give it to him by turning this way. He's not expecting that. He's expecting you to fight and pull it. All of a sudden you smash it against his jaw, then you turn and push. The point is it'll work, but you need to stress test it a little bit. If we're here in person, I could show you that. In the meantime, don't say, well, I don't have anybody to train with or I don't have a bag to hit, so it's not going to work. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. You'll surprise yourself when you need it. It'll come out of you. Turn it down, turn it down. All right, basic techniques. Keep it simple, stick it through their midsection, blast with two hands, punch in the face, turning your whole body and stepping as you strike. And use basic techniques to create maximum amounts of force and power. Then later, once you know how to defend yourself, learn the more esoteric, fun uh, pieces of the martial arts that are really work. All right, Ed Dean says, air assault, expecting you to defend. Yeah, go offensive. They, they think you're gonna be on the offensive. And Ed, I'm glad you, so glad you said that because I've been thinking about this for three days now. And it's this idea that the best offense is a good defense. You've heard that, right? And that's the problem with vague platitudes is what's true is also true the other, the other way around. You know, um, you, you, you can't ever live in, in platitudes with anything in life, but especially with self-defense. <laughs> They'll get you killed. You got to let go of them. You have to respond to what's happening in the moment. Think about it this way. If you never go on the offense, you can never score, right? So the best you can do is just not lose. And when you fight not to lose, that's when you really lose. You have to fight to win. And that's true in business. That's true in uh, relationships. That's true in almost everything. Sometimes it's good. You gotta, you gotta just tuck the chin. You have to take a few hits against the, heart, the arms and the top of your head and it gets bigger, strong opponent. Let him punch himself out a little bit. Look for that opening, bam, bam. Move to the side. Sometimes you have to have a good, strong defense, and you do want to be def defensive. But if you only practice defensive moves and you get really good at waiting and blocking and blocking and blocking, but you don't know how to just immediately shut them down and, and go for the knockout strike for self-defense, then you give them so much time. Time feeds fear. Like the longer you wait and you think about something and you're afraid of something and you think about something, you think of all the horrible things that can happen. You want to kill that fear? Take immediate action. Take a step. Pick up the phone. Call somebody. Say a word. Start to do a push-up, right? Um, throw away the candy in the house and eat a, whatever it is. Whatever you're, you're stalling on, that feeds that fear and it grows. Take action. Action kills fear. Same thing in self-defense. Instead of, of getting in this position and waiting and hoping you're gonna block, blocking, blocking all the different moves, like a Kung Fu movie, that's a movie, it doesn't work. No, you want to say back up, you're too, boom! And before you get into too much of a dissertation on how he's closing distance, and it's your right to defend yourself, you've already stuck it through his midsection and let the cops come and pick him up because you knew his intention, and you knew, and you could sense it, you could feel it, you saw him do it to somebody else, and you have to now defend yourself. Stop waiting, right? Immediately take action. So sometimes you do have to go on the offensive, and when you go on the offensive, you can end the fight so much faster if you're the first mover. When you realize you don't have a choice, you can be in this position, hey, you're too close, right? And then when he comes in even closer, because he's used to being a punk, intimidating, hurting people, or there's two or three of them, 
you, the longer you wait, the more you give them time to hurt you, to take something from you, to steal your dignity, your life, your stuff. So if you immediately attack, yeah, I was in fear of my life. I had to defend myself. I couldn't think about it any longer. My fear was growing. I was starting to get overwhelmed. I realized I couldn't breathe. I started seeing white dots, which means I was holding my breath and my brain was starving of oxygen. I was about to pass out and he was gonna smash me into the ground and do worse things to me. So instead, I just stuck my, my shillelagh in his face for self-defense. And they said, oh, okay, well, that, we, have, we have cameras because there's cameras everywhere now. We saw that. We saw you stay, like, hey, back up, you're too close. And we saw him coming in and he started to put his hand in his pocket. Maybe he was gonna pull something out. So we understand that you had to stick that right in his face a couple times and do multiple jabs, right? When you do these, these attacks, when you do these attacks, do three, four, five. The fight's not over till you win. Uh, that's something I've been meaning to say a lot lately, is that you have to, when you go in on your attack and you're defending yourself, you have to throw multiple attacks. And they can be the same thing. So don't think that you're being uncreative because you're hitting one, two, three in the face, four, five for self-defense. Just think that you're being the, uh, thorough, right? In self-defense, you're allowing yourself more opportunities to defend yourself and practice that way. Don't practice one and done. Oh, fight's over. That's why, it's one of the reasons why uh, I love doing, I wish I had a board here. Oh, maybe we can do that. Let's do a one inch punch. I love doing the one inch punch on the board right because now don't slow this down because you might see the secret of the one inch punch which almost everybody does i'm not sure if it'll happen or not they uh by the way you break boards with the grain if you go against the grain they flex and they won't break that's just a tip in case you haven't broken a board before i don't know if i can get this to stand up or not all right, so the, the one inch punch, right? It's just this idea that you go in. Just want to show it's two pieces. That one, and, and like I said, if you, if you slow it down, you'll see that I pull back a little bit. That's just because I haven't practiced in a while. A true inch, one inch punch just goes straight in, which I can do, I can show you that. But the problem I have with the one inch punch is that people see Bruce Lee sits there and, um, Oh, thank you. I'm glad to, glad to see you. Well, welcome back. Uh, I wish you're down here with me in sunny Florida. Boom, that comes in and it hits him. And, and the, the thing with the Bruce Lee and uh, who was it? Uh, not Bill Wallace. Bill Wallace wouldn't have moved. Super foot. No, it was um, one of the other great fighters at the time, Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis at the tournament takes the one and punch, hits him in the chair, goes sliding back. What a great memorable moment to show the power of the Wing Chun one inch punch and how devastating it is. However, Bill, uh, uh, I almost said Bill Wallace again. Um, Joe Lewis wasn't fighting back for one, wasn't moving for two, and uh, for three wasn't coming forward, and four, I don't know if we need a four. It didn't kill him, it just knocked him in a chair and he got back up. He could have popped back up, bam! and kicked him three or four times because he outweighed him by like 80 pounds. And he was a, he was a world famous fighter and Bruce Lee was a movie star. And I'm not, I'm not, we're not comparing the stuff. Don't give me the hate mail of the Bruce Lee. You don't have to agree with me. I'm just telling you what I saw in the video. But the point is so many people rely on that one technique. I'm gonna learn this one technique. I'm gonna have this one inch punch. It's gonna destroy everything. That's all I have to work on. One inch punch, one inch punch. Then you get the big red knuckle. You get the one inch punch, one inch punch. And then they, they forget that a fight is a couple punches, and you gotta move, and you gotta bob. You have to learn how to move your head so you don't get hit. And you have to do that before you throw a punch. And if you just walk in to a punch, it doesn't matter how bad it is, you can knock yourself out. And then creating power in the punch, and then moving your body. And the same is true when you practice with your walking stick for when stuff hits the fan. Maybe it's the, the uh, zombie apocalypse, Maybe it's just bare shells and you're fighting over toilet paper again, like we did last year in three months. But don't, don't do that. Think uh, mindset, 
of uh, overabundance. If you think of a, if you have an abundant mindset, you'll prepare now so you don't have to panic like everybody else. And you won't buy all the lies that it's a scarcity thing. It's not. It's plenty of stuff out there. Take care of yourself now, but also take care of your physical self and take care of your self defense. Learn self defense. From here, you go through and you're striking, you're fighting. It's going to be a dynamic thing. Hopefully, ideally, if you've done it right and you've practiced well and you've prepared well, that one strike could be enough to hit him so hard right here or up here into the chin or here that it does knock them out, that it does finish the fight. But if it doesn't, you're not done. So don't practice one and done. That's my point. Practice multiple strikes. Practice them. Put them in combination. This is one of my favorites. One, two, boxing, and then finish with a very hard using your whole body. Notice I'm turning shoulders and hips, not my arms. It's not the arms. It's the whole body's turning, and you're very strong there. I don't care who you are. You're stronger here than you are like this. Everybody is. You guys have been awesome. Please put the comments below. What are you doing to prepare for when stuff hits the fan? Are you just stuck in the pantry? Or are you just stuck uh, stockpiling water? Do you have batteries and you have uh, matches and light source or fire source, light source, heat source? Did you get your... Um, your medical kit did you learn how to use it do you know how to use all the stuff in the medical kit or the important stuff do you know how to um you know do the sucking sucking wound do you know how to uh do a tourniquet if you need to do you know how to set an arm if you get something broken but what are you doing to physically prepare for your self-defense if you need it ideally the world goes back to a calm we're all loving each other uh we've got the rule of law again People are following the orders. They're now out there cracking people with their shillelaghs on the police helmets for the next shutdown as they come in by. You know, when all this stuff happened in Australia, I don't know if you guys have seen that. But maybe you're in Haiti. Maybe you're in uh, Cuba. Maybe you're in uh, Zimbabwe. Or, I mean, you name it. They're starting to, they're starting to go. Uh, South Africa. You know, it's been, a, it's been crazy in other countries for a while. But there's more chaos. There's more, more stuff coming. So in that case, if you are preparing... What are you doing? What's your favorite weapon? Put that in the comments. What's your weapon of choice? Is it the walking stick? Is it an Irish shillelagh? Do you like these black thorns? If you want to see what they look like, there's a link below. It's the second link. Um, yeah, Israeli bandages. I got three in my car. Got three tourniquets, three blood clotting, blood clot stopping. I carry them with me in the car. I got them at the house. I have them here in the back. Um, but do you know how to use them? Have you trained on them? Take a course. Where could you find a course? It's all on YouTube. It's not as good as in person, but it's a good start. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.